I'm going to begin a review. I mean, I was reading you've got this kind of remarkable kind of personal connection to this story for your grandfather. It's quite hard to believe what he kind of would have experienced that level of fear that he would have sort of felt of potentially being caught. Do you know why he felt compelled to, to do that? It's a million dollar question. I wish I knew. I mean, I, I have some, I mean, I have more information now and even in the last year than I've had for my adult life. And, you know, my mother has more information than she ever had also. And, there are some events, I think, in his, that I found out in his sort of near history, some frightening things. Um, his, his father was very much a, a very vocal um, race man, you know, he was, he spoke out about the uplift of, of the, of black people after abolition and, you know, there was this sort of moment of great hope and he was very, he was very vocal and outspoken and people n near to him like lost their lives because of that. And so that was the environment that my grandfather grew up in. So one can only imagine that there was a certain correlation between black pride and danger. Yeah, well, I mean, Ruth, that's something you had to kind of try and understand through the character of Claire. I mean, such a, so much complexity to this character, what she went through and what she, what was at stake. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously it's a challenge to, to play like this, but I imagine it must've been such an enjoyable challenge because as, as an actress, all you ever want is kind of complex roles of nuance and stuff and this, I mean, Claire has that uh, and then some, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Both Claire and Irene, um, I mean, that's why it's a gift and that's why, you know, myself and Tessa felt truly blessed, um, you know, um, to be able to play these parts, but you know, and it, it sort of combines my two loves. You know, I love history and I love art, and um, you know, uh, whenever you know I read sort of contemporary history um, of, of of the time the, the novel was written, nineteen twenties, I I I I want to sort of viscerally experience what it was like, the smells, the feelings, the interaction. And acting is actually as close as you can get. Mm -hmm. But I f we felt that very deeply on this. And I don't know, like looking at the film, watching it now, I think we did, we kind of touched on that. But I will, you know, never truly understand what it is to pass. Mm -hmm. It just, it's, it's not in my history and it won't be in my future. So I had to sort of find parallels with the idea of severing a part of yourself, exiling yourself from your community, all these different complex journeys that Claire has gone on, simply to live the life she wants to li lead, which is one of freedom and having things, freedom to be yourself. And so, uh, I don't know, it was a very complex, joyful journey, but also very emotionally quite draining. Mm. In terms of yeah, connecting to, to the roles, because obviously there's that moment when she kind of goes to that party and she's sort of, and suddenly you see her sort of face light up, that she's mm -hmm. around a community and a culture that she maybe felt sort of distant from. Do you guys, because maybe it's sort of an age thing, but do you, can you recall any moments in your lives where you sort of felt in tune with your own kind of heritage and background as you kind of got older? Because I mean, my family heritage is Jewish mm -hmm. and I never really kind of felt it much at school and when I'm younger. And I remember there was a moment, even just like three years ago, I was at a kind of family tea and I sort of looked around and it just, I suddenly felt like I belonged into a kind of community that I hadn't felt before, if that makes sense. I wonder if you guys can uh, have ever experienced that before. Well, I've always been other, so mm -hmm. always. Um, so that's sort of an easy access for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, when um, I'm half Ethiopian, half Irish, and I was born in Ethiopia, lived in Ireland, did a lot of my schooling in London, and so I've never really completely wholly belonged mm. where I am. Mm. So the other, the outsider, you know, the misfit, all those kind of things I'm drawn to and I feel a, a kinship with. Mm. Um, so, but in my response to that was to cleave <laughs> to my heritage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it's very important for me, both sides of my heritage are very important for me, um, simply because other people 
um, was so vocal about it. And, you know, they I felt like other people had so many opinions on what I was allowed to be mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. their perspective um, and their opinions had su- were suddenly mm-hmm. my reality. Mm-hmm. And I really, really violently re- like, reacted against mm-hmm. that. Even more true when you become a public figure. <laughs> yes, exactly. And <laughs> so it's complex, it's complex. Yeah. But belonging is a very interesting subject mm-hmm. and sometimes you find it in the strangest of places and I seem to have yes. found it on film sets with wonderful artists. Likewise, it's true. I was going to say, you sort of, you, you make that, I mean, it's possible to make that community as well. If yes. You, you know, I, I, I so not in such a sort of um, tangible sense, but I, I definitely relate to the thing you're saying about being a bit outsidery. I think people make a lot of assumptions about who I am and yeah. this sort of community yeah. and, you know, the British theatre and blah, blah, blah. but I, I've also felt very at home in America and you know mm. there's a whole American side of my identity so and I never when I was in you know fancy schools in England and private schools with all these very country country folk and the, <laughs> the Range Rovers <laughs> you know there was you know my American mother and me like getting to school in a taxi so it was always very <laughs> like who is this person <laughs> not fit in with anything mm. like, <laughs> Yeah. And my, my, my final question, I was speaking to Andre about this as well, which is, I think obviously the, the notion of performance is such a big part of this, but what I sort of found quite striking is it's not just the performance that Claire puts on, but I found that everyone's putting on a bit of a performance, performing this performative nature of being a, a good husband, a good wife, a mother. Do you think that in life we all perform? To Absolutely, that's yeah. what it's. That's what the whole the whole point of this mm. movie actually is. I got it. There's a much bigger kind of yeah. universal theme, you know, and the thing is it, it telegraphs the one who is who's hiding her racial identity, but she's not hiding anything else about herself. You know, she's she's actually expressing herself fully, even within a performance, ironically, mm. more so within a performance yeah. than anybody else in the movie. Everybody else is is very preoccupied with their social performance and they're not always they're not always matching up what they think they believe and what they actually want. And that I think is often true for many of us. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. I've got to spoken for ages to you guys. <laughs> Best of luck with the release of the thank movie. Thank you ever so Cheers. much. Take care. Thank Bye-bye. You. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.